Hello and welcome to day 54 of our daily Bible reading. We begin with prayer. Loving God, may your word come alive in our hearts and minds. Reshape our thoughts, attitudes, and actions according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. And we begin at Leviticus chapter 14. Purification of the diseased. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This shall be the rule for the person with a defiling skin disease at the time of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest. The priest shall go out of the camp, and the priest shall make an examination. If the disease is healed in the defiled person, the priest shall command that two living clean birds and cedar wood and crimson yarn and hyssop be brought for the one who is to be cleansed. The priest shall command that one of the birds be slaughtered over fresh water in a clay vessel. He shall take the living bird with the cedar wood and the crimson yarn and the hyssop and dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was slaughtered over the fresh water. He shall sprinkle it seven times upon the one who is to be cleansed of the defiling disease. Then he shall pronounce him clean and he shall let the living bird go into the open field. The one who is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and bathe himself in water, and he shall be clean. After that he shall come into the camp, but shall live outside his tent seven days. On the seventh day he shall shave all his hair. Of head, beard, eyebrows, he shall shave all his hair. Then he shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and he shall be clean. On the eighth day he shall take two male lambs without blemish and one ewe lamb in its first year without blemish and a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah, of choice flour mixed with oil and one log of oil. The priest who cleanses shall set the person to be cleansed along with these things before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The priest shall take one of the lambs and offer it as a guilt offering, along with the log of oil, and raise them as an elevation offering before the Lord. He shall slaughter the lamb in the place where the purification offering and the burnt offering are slaughtered in the holy place, for the guilt offering, like the purification offering, belongs to the priest. It is most holy. The priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand and on the big toe of the right foot. The priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand, and dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and sprinkle some oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. Some of the oil that remains in his hand the priest shall put on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot, on top of the blood of the guilt offering. The rest of the oil that is in the priest's hands he shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed. Then the priest shall make atonement on his behalf before the Lord. The priest shall offer the purification offering, to make atonement for the one to be cleansed from his uncleanness. Afterward he shall slaughter the burnt offering, and the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the grain offering on the altar. Thus the priest shall make atonement on his behalf, and he shall be clean. But if he is poor and cannot afford so much, he shall take one male lamb for a guilt offering to be elevated, to make atonement on his behalf, and one-tenth of an ephah of choice flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, and a log of oil, also two tur turtle doves or two pigeons, such as he can afford, one for a purification offering, and the other for a burnt offering. On the eighth day he shall bring them for his cleansing to the priest, to the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord. And the priest shall take the lamb of the guilt offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall raise them as an elevation offering before the Lord. 
the priest shall slaughter the lamb of the guilt offering and take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed and on the thumb of the right hand and on the big toe of the right foot the priest shall pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand and sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the lord priest shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed and on the thumb of the right hand and the big toe of the right foot where the blood of the guilt offering was placed the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed to make atonement on his behalf before the lord and he shall offer of the turtle doves or pigeons such as he can afford one for a purification offering and the other for a burnt offering along with a grain offering and the priest shall make atonement before the lord on behalf of the one being cleansed this is the rule for the one who has a defiling disease who cannot afford the offerings for his cleansing the lord spoke to moses and aaron saying when you come into the land of canaan which i give you for a possession and i put a defiling disease in a house in the land of your possession the owner of the house shall come and tell the priest saying there seems to me to be some sort of disease in my house the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest goes to examine the disease or all that is in the house will become unclean and afterward the priest shall go in to inspect the house he shall examine the disease if the disease is in the walls of the house with greenish or reddish spots and if it appears to be deeper than the surface the priest shall go outside to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days the priest shall come again on the seventh day and make an inspection if the disease has spread in the walls of the house the priest shall command that the stones in which the disease appears be taken out and thrown into an unclean place outside the city he shall have the inside of the house scraped thoroughly and the plaster that is scraped off shall be dumped in an unclean place outside the city they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones and take other plaster and plaster the house if the disease breaks out again in the house after he has taken out the stones and scraped the house and plastered it the priest shall go and make inspection if the disease has spread in the house it is a spreading defiling disease in the house it is unclean he shall have the house torn down its stones and timbers and all the plaster of the house and taken outside the city to an unclean place all who enter the house while it is shut up shall be unclean until the evening and all who sleep in the house shall wash their clothes and all who eat in the house shall wash their clothes if the priest comes and makes an inspection and the disease has not spread in the house after the house was plastered the priest shall pronounce the house clean the disease is healed for the cleansing of the house he shall take two birds with cedar wood and crimson yarn and hyssop and shall slaughter one of the birds over fresh water in a clay vessel and shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the crimson yarn along with the living bird and dip them in the blood of the slaughtered bird and the fresh water and sprinkle the house seven times thus he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and with the fresh water and with the living bird and with the cedar wood and hyssop and crimson yarn and he shall let the living bird go out of the city into the open field so he shall make an atonement for the house and it shall be clean this is the rule for any defiling disease for an itch for defiling diseases in clothing and houses and for a swelling or an eruption or a spot to determine when it is unclean and when it is clean this is the rule for defiling diseases
in Mark chapter 6, verse 30 through 56. Feeding the 5,000. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came toward them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. Healing the Sick at Gennesaret When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Psalm 40, Thanksgiving for Deliverance and a Prayer for Help To the Leader of David, a Psalm I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. 
I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. And Proverbs chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. This has been the Word of God and the Word of Life. Thanks be to God, and we'll see you tomorrow.